Let's talk about abilities. There are two types of abilities, passive and active. For now, we will talk about the former one. Passive abilities are the abilities that don't need to be activated by a player because it is an ongoing effect. Oh, by the way, before we proceed, I would like you to know that at the time of recording, these are the only passive skills available. So, if they will add more in the future, it won't be here. Let's start with Bugle Bath and Regatorate. Although called differently, they work just the same. Hobbies with these abilities are Alligator and Pugman. So, how does it work? At the beginning of the summoner's turn, these hobbies will heal damage, but it does not cure poison. If you want to cure poison damage, you need to go directly to the healing spa or cure it with a healer hobby like Clinico. Or you can just retreat alligator and quagmire at the back and wait for the poison damage to fade on its own. Since it heals by itself, it won't really get affected that much. Hobbies with this ability are tanky, so you can use them in many ways like capturing packing point, triggering traps, stepping on a lava, and be a mid shield. But even though they are kinda hard to kill, it is still possible, so be careful. Uh, the best way to deal with them if you are facing one is to use disease damage since it kinda cancel out their regeneration ability. Or you can also snipe them from afar with phobies like your cannon, but that's not gonna be easy. Or use the easiest way to kill a phobie, which is to put it into the abyss. Okay, so now let's move on to the next passive abilities, counter attack and it's voodoo. Again, they have different names but they work almost the same. So, when an enemy attacks them, the enemy will receive a portion of their damage dealt. Phobies with these abilities are stabby and zappy. Stabby can reflect 30% damage. While Zappy can reflect 35 damage to non-mechanical units and another 35% for mechanical units, making it to reflect a total of 70% damage to again mechanical units since it also has electric damage. These two phobies are slow but they are great tank and damage dealer. I'm not gonna lie. They are both annoying to face, but great to have. There are different ways on how to build them. Here are some of them. For Stabby, since it's a dimensional unit, I would say Poison will be a good friend and Disease will be a great one since it's the Poison and or Disease damage that's attacking them. You won't receive the reflected damage. And the best way to finish it off is with Fire Tile, Lava Tile, Trap, Poison, and or Disease so you won't receive the last damage and end dimensional pull. Pushing it into the abyss is also in key, but you must be careful with the dimensional pull or you will go down with him. On the other hand, Zappy is a mechanical unit and I can't think of any counter for it except Erratic. Why? Because Erratic has an electric damage and it also leeches 40% of its damage as its HP. So, even if Zappy reflects 35% damage, Erratic's leech will cancel out the reflected damage but his leech will become 5% only instead of 40 And I think that's not too bad. Enough with that, let's proceed to the next set of passive abilities, which is newly deads. Pack Attack and Tag Team. Again, they have different names but they are all the same thing. Basically, this is just a pairing buff. If you summon a pair of phobies, both of them will get additional damage. So, the pairing goes like this. Ted and Jill for newly deads, Blue Speedola and Red Speedola for Tag Team, lastly, Jackalup King and one or all of the following, Zapsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. 
what I usually do with them is I use them for surprise attacks. For example, I will only summon Jill, and then if I get a chance to attack the enemy, I will summon Ted for the pairing bonus, and most of the time, I get the enemy with that. But how to deal with them? Well, it's very easy. We just need them to lose the buff, and in order to do that, you just need to kill one of them. Next in line is Sedimentary and Stasis Passive Abilities. These abilities are owned by Raukus and Boomer respectively. With these passive abilities, they cannot be pushed, pulled, teleported, or swapped. If there's a portable toilet, then these two are the portable walls of the phobies. Though, you still need to be careful because even if they can be relocated, they can still be used as an encore to initiate AOE pull or push attacks. They might not get affected by it, but the adjacent units will be. Let's move forward to our next passive ability, which is the Digest. It is unique to the glob only. The glob can move onto the same tile where the enemy is. If he is sharing a tile with an enemy at the end of their turn, it will prevent the enemy from moving and at the same time, it will damage it as long as the enemy is inside the glob. However, if the glob got pushed or pulled, the enemy will be freed. If you are facing the glob, you must be really cautious about your positioning. Even if it's low, it can slowly push you back trying to avoid him. If you see the enemy uses the blob, make sure you have push or pull phobie ready. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a way to annoy the blob users. Wanna know? Okay, I will tell you but keep it a secret. <laughs> Going back, what we have here is Ice Eye. This ability is unique to Doom Doom only. So, what it does is that it reveals the enemy traps within two tiles line of sight at the beginning of the summoner's turn. I think Doom Doom is not that type of hobbies that you will summon right away because he is situational. Like, I will only summon him if the enemy has a lot of trappers summon. And speaking of traps, there's also a passive ability called the Trap Absorber. The name itself already explained how it works, so yeah, it basically disarms enemy traps without triggering it. So we have two hobbies with this ability. Yes, the first one is Doom Doom and the other one is Tickles. It's very easy to absorb the trap, they just need to stand directly on it. Next we have Smell Me and Halitosis. These two passive abilities are owned by Smiley. They both give this is damage, but the ways are different. So for Smell Me, it works like Karma. If a non-mechanical unit such as Monster, Undead, and Dimensional Phobies attack Smiley, they will get disease, and disease doesn't have any cure. Meanwhile, in Halitosis, if Smiley managed to get close to the non-mechanical enemy unit, all nearby non-mechanical enemy units surrounding Smiley within one tile will get disease at the end of the summoner's turn. Smiley is great to annoy AOE attackers such as Klepto and dimensional units such as Beauty. While it looks like she is OP, she is also easy to counter with mechanical units. Okay, thank you. Next? Next is Heart Attack. There are two phobies who have this passive ability, and those are High Five and Squiggles. Basically, if these two phobies are directly attacking the heart, there will be additional damage to their basic stats. They are great in rushing the heart in maps with open heart like Mazeo So you better not ignore them or else they will break your heart into pieces. Now, let's talk about the Life Force. This passive ability is unique to Alastor, and what it does is that it allows Alastor to leech 100% of damage dealt to enemies as her HP. She is absolutely pretty annoying to kill, but not impossible. 
how about you guys? How do you deal with Alastor? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you! Moving on to the no pair, this passive ability is owned by Charon. So when Charon moves, the tiles that he passed through will be disabled by the mud, be it a panic point, steam pad, healing spa, trap, lava, fire tile, as in everything will be disabled for two turns. If the tile is disabled by mud, you cannot put a trap in it nor add an obstacle. And the thing here is that there's no direct counter against the mud itself. Unless you will go for Charon, which is the best way to deal with him in my opinion, since he cannot be healed or cured by the healing spa. Next is Peekaboo! I see you! <laughs> Just kidding! So, Peekaboo is unique to Tiny Team. This passive ability reduces 50% of the damage that Tiny Team will receive while he is underground. By default, Tiny Team is in the underground. Unless you will make him attack, that's the only time that he will receive 100% of the enemy's damage. So, how can you make him go underground again? Well, that's easy. Just don't attack with him for a turn, and he will automatically hide after that. Okay? Then, we have the Rage. This passive ability is unique to Ogre. It only activates when your heart's HP is less than or equal to 3000. When active, Ogre's damage will increase. He is best to use when you are getting Heart Rush. Anyway, next, we have the Resurrect. A handful of phobies have this ability. And they are Ted, Jill, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, Jackalope King, Daisy, and Pterodactyl. So, it's pretty self-explanatory. When a Resurrect Phoby, quote-unquote, died, they will enter their bone state. And if they are not stepped on, they will come back to life with a specific amount of health. So, you must step on them in order to full kill them. Well, if they died over a lava tile, obstacle, ice trap, and or abyss, they won't be able to resurrect anymore. So, finally, the transform passive ability, which is unique to werewolf. This allows werewolf to transform into its alternate stats, which is triple of its basic stats, every two rounds. If Werewolf is damaged, the percentage of damage is also converted. So, what Werewolf owners do is they only attack Werewolf when he is transformed, then they will retreat it to heal when the transform phase is over. And I think that's enough for passive abilities. Let me know if you want to know about the active abilities in the next chapter. But for now, congrats! You are one step closer to being a Phobis Master. So that's pretty much it for now. Thank you for watching. I will see you in your dreams. Bye-bye!